I'm Steve for This Week with Cars and today I just wanted to do a real short video and talk to you about different stereo options for vintage cars. Your first thought might be to get one of those vintage looking modern radios that you can put in place of the vintage radio in the car. In my opinion a lot of those don't look vintage. Some of them even have LCD displays so I'm not sure what's vintage about them besides the fact that they have knobs on them. Secondly, what if your car is so old that it never had a radio in the first place? Do you really want to cut a hole somewhere to install a radio? What if your car is positive ground? Modern radios require a negative ground electrical system in order to be installed into the car. Otherwise, you have to isolate the radio from the rest of the car, which could cause a dangerous situation and a fire hazard. So let's take a look at a few options that I'm using. The first and maybe most obvious thing you could do to modernize the stereo in an old car is to actually put a modern stereo into it. This is my first car. This is a 1969 Austin Healey Sprite. You might be able to see on the camera there's two speakers behind this grill now. So there are two modern speakers and then I have a modern head unit. The pros of a setup like this are that it always works, it's always here in the car, and you never have to worry about batteries. Cons would be that you have a modern looking stereo in your car that might look out of place with the rest of the car. Also, if you want to upgrade your stereo down the road, it's harder to upgrade something that is installed permanently into your car than it is to replace something that you carry with you. And if you have multiple cars, you would need to install a new stereo into each of the cars that you own and you would have to program each of those stereos with your favorite stations, music, Bluetooth setup, however you listen to the radio. The next step would be doing something like what I'm doing here in this Jensen Interceptor. Believe it or not, there is no head unit for this car. Everything is run by the amplifier. So you connect your phone through Bluetooth, through the amplifier, you control the volume, you control what's playing. Everything is controlled from your phone directly to the amplifier which then distributes everything to all of the speakers. So here I'm connected to the Jensen interceptor with my phone. I'll start something playing. So there it is. We can come down here we can control. President Biden says he's focused on getting Americans out of Afghanistan by August We can come down here and we can control the main volume. updated the country today on the status of evacuations out of Kabul. We can even use the volume here on the side and government and Pierre's Asma Khalid reports the administration has been facing you to play you can go out. in here you can change all of your equalizer settings evacuated roughly 13,000 people since August 14th it doesn't set your listening how position how you can do all the controls of this amplifier right from your phone there is no head unit you can hide that under a seat if you wanted to keep your car stock looking and hide the speakers, you could hide the amplifier as well. And nobody would know that you had a modern stereo system in the car at all. And of course, if you're going with a highly modified car like this one, where the speakers are a part of what you want people to see of the car, you can give everything a sleeker and more modern look by maintaining everything within the amplifier and maybe even mounting your phone somewhere on the dashboard because your phone is really what you want to be using anyways it's going to have your navigation it can interrupt the the radio the, with the music or what you're listening to to give you um, turning instructions things like that and in my opinion having a setup that the phone treats as just a speaker is a lot better than the CarPlay and connecting your modern stereo as a Bluetooth headset instead of connecting it as a speaker like it is done here. Anything that's on my phone, I can play through these speakers. Some Bluetooth head units, they're limited to what you can actually play from the phone through them. And so, for example, I can switch over to YouTube, just click play, and now I'm playing that through the speakers on the car. Now how about a car like my FJ40 here? There are no door panels. There is no trim to hide any speakers. So where would I even put speakers in a vehicle like this? 
This is where one of my favorite vintage stereo solutions comes in. This is my Beats Pill, and I've been using this for uh, a very long time. I've had that probably at least five, six, maybe more years than that. It's a Bluetooth speaker, has a battery inside, also has USB ports on the back so you can plug your phone into it, charge your phone on the way. And although not used very much today, it does have an auxiliary port so you can plug devices that don't have Bluetooth into the speaker and use that. I've had a lot of these Bluetooth speakers. I've seen a lot of people using those little tiny square Bluetooth speakers. I don't think those get loud enough to be used in a lot of vintage cars, especially in convertibles where you might have a lot of wind noise and take a, a bigger speaker like this. Now, one of my new favorite speakers has a feature that my Beats Pill doesn't have. This is a new speaker that I got. It's come up from a company called Treb Lab. And this one has all the features of the pill that you would expect. Let's turn it on. Power on. Line in mode. I, it went to defaulted to line in mode because I have this auxiliary cord connected. This just has a headphone jack on the other side of it. And there's a reason that I have this headphone jack plugged in. And that's because this speaker also has FM mode. An the FM study was stereo built the into it. For black lives and the creating law so you don't have to be using your internet. You don't have to be using Bluetooth to the speaker. The you can just protest -related tune this to an FM station, which is something that a lot of Bluetooth speakers I've seen haven't had. In defense of black lives. The Biden now, one downside to this product, I wish that there was an app that you could use to control this so that you could tune it to an FM station that you want directly. The only way to get to FM stations on this is to hit the play button and that will scan through all of your local FM stations and you hit the play button again to stop it at the station that you want. You can you hold down the plus and minus buttons in order to go back to a station that you previously were listening to. Now you might be wondering how this stereo is actually picking up FM stations here in the car. And this speaker actually has a little trick because it's using this line-in connection as an antenna. Did you hear the static come in when I unplugged that? That's because it no longer has a good enough antenna to receive FM stations. So if you are buying a Bluetooth speaker and it doesn't have an external antenna, it's probably not going to work very well. And now that I've unplugged this line in port, now if I double click this, it's going to go to Bluetooth mode. We can of course now just take our phone and play whatever we want over the speaker. And again, this shows up as a speaker and not a headset. So you, any of the sounds that are going through your phone are going to come through the speaker. And of course, like most of these speakers, here on the end, underneath this big rubber plug, you have ports here to power other devices. You can recharge your phone off of it. And one nice thing, there's even a switch right here so you can turn the power on these ports on and off if you'd like. And I should mention one final thing I really like about this product, it has this rubber sleeve on it. All the parts around it are rubber. So you can throw this in your car. You don't have to worry about the speaker getting scratched up or damaging your car. That's not the case with the Beats Pill. This is all metal right here. The back of it is plastic, but this could do damage to your car if it was rolling around in it. Also on this one, this is not completely square. There is an angle there. So your speaker can sit like this or your speaker can sit like this. I'll put a link to this Bluetooth speaker in the description below. Well, that's it for today. Those are just a few of the common options that I use on vintage cars. If you have any questions, post in the comments below. And if you want to see a video going further in depth into any of these systems, post that in the comments below as well so that I can see it. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.